So good morning, everybody. My apologies for being late. Um, I'm Robin Hunter, and I'm currently the, um, I think this is the last meeting that I'm actually the chair of the Board of Selectmen. So this evening, uh, this morning, what we wanted to do was just um, give everybody an overview of what will be on the special town meeting warrant. As you all know, in light of COVID-19, what we, what we are presenting at town meeting is going to be only budget related items. It is really important for us as a town to get the budget approved so that we can run the town or continue to run the town um, the way it's the way um, in, in a more efficient manner. Um, not having the budget approved municipal accounting is very different from the corporate world or from what all of us are used to. Um, we need for town meeting to appropriate, to approve the budget. That means we need town meeting to approve the actual cash that we can spend in order to operate the town. Uh, many people say, well, what about the free cash? We can't touch free cash without town meeting approving it. And that's why it is so important for us to have this budget approved um, or to have this special town meeting to approve the budget. In light of the emergency, there are other uh, ways in place that you can um, get spending approved. And that's, but that would be an extremely extremely cumbersome for us as a town. It also wouldn't allow us to, um, to, to spend money on raises that have already been approved. And so the best path forward for us as a town is to have the special town meeting. In light of, of COVID-19, we, we needed to make sure that we could conduct a town meeting in a safer way as possible. At this town meeting, we cannot guarantee that nobody um, could contact COVID-19, but what we have done is put in place a, a process whereby we will minimize risk to all. The meeting is going to be held on June 29th it's going to be held outdoors. It's a completely new concept to those of us in Dover. Uh, we will be making every effort and will make every effort to um, have the meeting be as condensed as possible, which is why we felt that having the meeting today or and we're going to hold some other meetings to give everybody background as to what will be presented at town meeting is really important. We as a board, what is most critical to us is to be transparent. And these informational sessions will allow us to be as transparent as possible. If people are looking at a recording of this meeting and have some questions, please email any of the selectmen or email your questions to the town administrator or probably um, to dot every I and cross every T, send your questions to the town, to a selectman with a copy to the town administrator so that we can ensure that we're getting that. And we will make every effort to, to answer any questions that we get in connection with the budget. So I don't see Chris on the call. Did he make it up to the yet? Hey Robin, I'm on the, I'm on the line. Okay. So Chris, you know, um, how do you want to do this? You know, Kate, could you bring up the presentation? Would you like me to make the presentation, Chris? Yeah, if, um, if you want to run through um, the slides, I'm happy to uh, answer any questions uh, that, okay. that may come up. Anything, right. add anything that you need. Okay. Um, before we begin, Bob, you have a comment. Hey, Robin, could you just go over some of the protocols that we've we've installed to, in order to make the attendance at town meeting as riskless as possible? I, I, 
I can do that. So um, we as a town have um, engaged, we are fortunate enough to have um, Kevin Ban be a citizen of Dover. Kevin is the chief medical officer of Walgreens and he is responsible for, I believe he said something like 400,000 employees worldwide. And so Kevin has had direct contact um, with the CDC and the WHO throughout the pandemic. And he is extremely, um, he is a phenomenal resource for us as a town to have. Uh, Kevin also in his also introduced us to an epidemiologist at Harvard University, John Brownstein. And John worked with Kevin and the moderator and the town clerk to, and the Board of Health to put together a protocol that we're going to follow. And what the protocol entails is we have, um, with the help of Chief McGowan and um, our police officers, we will be counting the number of um, citizens that um, are trying to attend town meeting. Uh, there will be, uh, you know, people will just even pull into the parking lot. Uh, there will be special places where you can park and the police department will be monitoring that. Um, as citizens leave their car to come into town meeting, we will be set up that everybody is at least six feet apart. That is the guidance um, that the CDC has put in place. We are requiring that all citizens wear masks. There will be hand sanitizer available as you check in. There is a special process for checking in. Every seat will be set up 15 feet apart. Um, citizens will be required to sit in those pre-designated seating areas. Uh, there will also be a process for leaving town meeting. So the bottom line is citizens need to give themselves ample time to be seated as well as to leave the meeting. Um, if you are in a hurry, this is probably not a good town meeting for you to attend because we will enforce both how to enter the meeting and how to exit the meeting. Um, we also can only um, provide seating for 60 citizens safely. So if based upon the count, the number of citizens that are attending the meeting exceeds 60, the moderator will have to um, postpone the meeting and we will not be able to have the budget approved. Um, unfortunately, these are very extraordinary um, times. And for us, what is paramount are two things. Number one, the safety of all citizens of Dover. And number two, the ability for us to operate the town so that we can provide services to our citizens. Um, for the remainder of the new fiscal year. Did I miss anything? Felicia, I know you're on the line. Did I miss some, anything about the protocol? Sounds like, you're, it sounds like you're covering it pretty tightly there, Robin. Okay. I think one thing I did forget to mention that if there, if there are, if anybody cannot wear a mask for medical reasons, um, there will be a special area set up for those individuals. Je John? Um, for the sake of, uh, You're on mute. Call
John, we can't hear you. So it was. This was fine before. How about now? Yeah. Is that Robert? Can you hear me now? Yes. So, Bob, and I just wanted to cover for this the people who might not have been present at the last two meetings or the last three Board of Selectmen meetings, how we got to this special town meeting, both from a quorum standpoint and the actions that we, the Board of Selectmen, instructed our town council to take last Wednesday, the prior to the legislative action. I think it'd be important to let everybody know how we got to the number 18, both from the town council's filing with the court prior to the legislative action, because it's paramount that people understand the nature of the articles that we're going to address today have very specific implications to those two events, both the legislative action and the action that we instructed our town council to undertake last Wednesday with the filing at the courts. Robin, could you hear that or Bob, could you hear that? I'm not sure that what. Yes, so, you know, um, prior, I, I made the assumption that everybody um, was aware of how we got to where we are today. And um, basically the town pet petitioned uh, with a judge to lower our quorum from 175 to 17.5 or 18 people so that we could hold a town meeting. The town meeting that we are holding is very different from the town meeting that we were planning to hold. It will only include um, six articles and they are all budget related and each of the articles are deemed to be important for us as a town to be able to continue again to deliver services to our citizens without interruption. It was also important to us that we could pay the salaries that had been approved to our town employees for this fiscal year uh, without getting the budget approved at town meeting approved colas would not be permitted to be included and during this time we felt it was important for us um, to to pay our our employees the wages that you know, were promised to them so that they can again continue to provide services to us as a town. So with that as background, uh, I think what we're going to do is jump in to the presentation. And Chris, you're back. So you can give the presentation and I can just interject where appropriate. Or not. <laughs> that sounds good. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you. Kate, would you mind uh, bringing up the slides, please? So as we wait for uh, Kate to bring up the slides, I just wanted to provide folks with a little bit of background. Each slide that you're about to see uh, is really just a summary of each of the, the essential articles uh, that uh, Chairwoman Hunter uh, just described for everybody. Um, all of them are uh, of, uh, of a financial nature. Um, and what we wanted to do was to just be able to showcase these, um, what they mean, the amount and the funding source of each to provide clarity around these. You can consider this a, a digital version of the Blue Book um, that the Warrant Committee issues out to the community, uh, which will also be issued in the coming days. I know it went to print um, this morning. Um, so with that, um, Kate, if you could advance to the next one. And Chris, we are going to place this presentation on the website as well, correct? Absolutely. Yep. That's a great point. So this will also be uh, at the end of the session on the dedicated town meeting 
uh, website that the town has created um, on uh, that you can link to from our from our homepage. So all this information, as well as the other information that uh, the board has discussed this morning, uh, will be on there for everyone to uh, to review. So you know what might be helpful? The website is new to everybody. So maybe at the end of the meeting, Kate could just go through where it is on the website, just to make it easy for everyone. That's a great idea. Only because it took me a little bit of time to find it, like the, the page yesterday. It could have been I was tired, but. So Kate can set up a remedial training for, for me too, because I, I'm dipping around in there as well. <laughs> All right. Um, here's a summary of the uh, of the nine essential financial articles, uh, as mentioned earlier. Uh, and again, these are all these are all deemed essential by the Board of Selectmen uh, last week in order for the town to be able to continue to operate into the next fiscal year. Uh, and, so the next and, and approved by Warren. And approved by the Warren Committee. That's correct. Um, so for Article One, Kate. Uh, these are the salaries for elected officials. This is a standard recurring article that you see uh, each town meeting. And this slide just highlights the past two years of actual uh, spend or actual appropriation for these positions, as well as the FY21 in the far right hand column, which is the recommended amount um, for, uh, for next year. Uh, the only change uh, that is seen here is to the amount for the town clerk position, which is a full-time staff position in town, even though it's elected. Uh, so that position falls under the other employees and the other employee benefits that are provided, um, for instance, by the personnel board. So the personnel board's recommended salary increase uh, for next year um, covers the, the town clerk as well. And so that's, uh, that's the increase that you see here on the screen. So these amounts are all covered. Uh, well, this is a separate article. These amounts are all funded by the operating budget, which is a separate article, Article 3, which we'll get to uh, in a second. So on the next slide, uh, this next article is, is the town's revolving funds. And these funds are set up um, really for accounting purposes um, to, uh, to be able to provide a separate accounting for uh, operations that the town provides in which they collect a user fee. Um, so for instance, um, the Board of Health, uh, Perk and Depot Inspection and Permitting, uh, they collect a fee when someone, a homeowner needs to go and do that type of work. Um, and so they, these funds directly go into these revolving funds. So funds are paid by user generated fees and then the expenses are expended for that same purpose. Um, so this is just, we need authorization each year from town meeting uh, to allow us to continue to utilize these revolving funds. And again, these are all generated by user fees and they do not impact uh, the tax rate. These are all, uh, there were are, there are two small adjustments to the building department gas inspector and the wiring inspector um, in that the building department anticipates some uh, additional fee generation next year based on permit applications and other activity. So those have been slightly increased by a few hundred dollars. But again, it's all user generated fees that, that fund these, uh, these funds. And Chris, for clarification um, for those, and I may have gotten this wrong, but these, this is the maximum amount that these balances can be. And any funds that come in in excess of these balances at the end of the fiscal year, go back into free cash and come back to the town. Is that correct? So it's yeah. almost what you call in the business world an impressed balance that's maintained in these accounts. Yep, that's exactly right. Um, so for the next slide, uh, the next article is the operating budget. And we put together three slides for the operating budget, just given that it is a, a majority of the, the financial spend um, here in town. So this first slide really just highlights for everybody the uh, what we did and what we looked at as we were putting together the operating budget this year, given the, uh, the impact, uh, the COVID impact, 
locally and, um, and globally. So the first is we look very closely at all our revenue sources. Uh, 97 or 98% of the town's operations are funded through uh, the property tax levy, um, but we do have some local revenue sources that could be impacted um, by economic changes like motor vehicle excise tax, for instance. Typically when you see a depressed economy, you sometimes see folks uh, not buying new cars. So you could see a, a, dip in, a dip in that revenue source. So we looked at all of our local receipts and we did make reductions uh, in areas most affected by economic pressures so that we weren't overestimating what we anticipated to bring into these, uh, these areas. And again, where we made cuts, they were, or not cuts, but where we made reductions were in motor vehicle excise tax, rental income, as well as license uh, and permit fees, anticipating a, uh, a slowdown um, potentially in those areas. Right, and, and just for clarification here, because I think it's really important that everybody understands this. We had an operating budget that had been approved by the Board of Selectmen and was going through warrant. And when COVID became a pandemic, we, as the Board of Selectmen, the town, and actually it was um, something that was really important to the town administrator, and he was the catalyst for doing this. He came to us and said, in light of what is going on right now in the Commonwealth, let's take a, a long, hard look at the budget we are going to present to the town and, and make sure that we're comfortable with all of the expenditures as well as the forecast we're making. And let's see if we can reduce the budget further because at this point, it's unclear to us how this pandem pandemic is going to impact the Commonwealth's finances, as well as the town of Dover's. So the budget we are presenting and going to present to town meeting is a reduced budget from what we had planned to present prior to the pandemic. And within this budget, there are still items that we can further reduce if need be, as we begin to better understand what the long-term impact is going to be on the town's um, resources as well as the Commonwealth's resources. So Chris, I wanted to make sure that the staff gave themselves the credit that's due there. Well said, thank you. Um, so that was, uh, those were some of the efforts that we looked in uh, in, uh, in revenues. Um, and then of course, when you look at your other excess revenues aside from your property taxes, you really wanna make sure that you're protecting or mitigating the, the property tax increase um, for the community and for the, the taxpayers um, in town. So uh, one of the things that we did is we made some structural changes to the budget by funding one-time projects uh, with free cash, which is considered by the state a one-time funding source. In the past, it was typically raised against the property tax levy. Um, so as we analyze this and as we looked at this, it's a good budget practice to fund one-time projects with one-time funding sources. And that allows us to minimize the amount of of taxes that we are raising um, at the end of the day for everything that we're looking to uh, accomplish. Um, and the other change that we made um, was regarding uh, funding for new positions um, for, um, for the community. So um, the, the board and, and many of the town's um, boards and committees have a really ambitious uh, agenda for the community in terms of um, the achievements and the goals uh, that they'd like to see implemented throughout the community. Uh, and in many respects, um, to be able to accomplish some of those requires some funding in some key areas. So we didn't want to fully remove those and the budget in the town's financial position is not in a place where we would need to as a result of this. But we did want to make sure, as the, uh, as the chairwoman said, we wanted to make sure that we were protecting ourselves as much as possible. So what we did for any new positions, and I should add, uh, these new positions make up a majority of the 
new money requested next year. Um, so what we did is we funded those for half of the year beginning January 1st. So that did two things. One, it allowed us to reduce the total amount that we were looking to raise for those positions next year. And it provides us with six more months to get an understanding and see how things shape out, um, certainly at the state level as it relates to state aid um, and whether or not those actions at the state could impact the town's finances. So it allows us to take a few more months to see what happens. And if we need to, we can put a pause on those positions if they're unaffordable or we can figure out another course of action. So um, that's, that was our focus on mitigating uh, tax impact through our, uh, through our budget expenditures. And then of course you want liquidity, um, certainly in normal years, but definitely in, um, in tough years. Um, and so uh, we're pleased to be able to uh, present a budget that doesn't tax to the full two and a half percent that's allowed uh, under state law. We've got just under $400,000 uh, that's not being taxed um, on the tax levy that we view as, as relief for folks. Um, and then the town also has a, a wonderful free cash um, balance that provides really strong, excellent reserves to weather any unknowns that could continue to come down uh, in the next few years. As we saw in the recession of 2008, the effects lasted about three through three fiscal years uh, in the Commonwealth. And that's what we're anticipating um, at a minimum as we put together the budget and look at the entire financial picture for the town this time around uh, as, as well. Chris, before you exit that page, just as a, a typo for those who are seeing it on the screen for the first time, the 400,000 is missing a zero and we'll address that in, in item three. For the Thank you. Town meeting, so. uh, Kate, so on the next slide um, is a, uh, just a, wanted to provide folks with just a, an at a glance view of kind of the major cost drivers in, uh, in the operating budget. So on the left hand side are our, uh, or essentially are our, um, um, are our requi required increases um, that come up. These are contractual increases. Um, so these are schools assessment for the region and for Chickering. Uh, these are town wage increases, cost of living adjustments, step increases, longevity, and things like that. Um, and then your pension uh, assessment, as well as our general liability, um, our health insurance and general liability insurance. Um, on the right hand side, uh, you'll see new cost increases. And these are the additional services that we were looking to, uh, that we're looking to provide this year. Um, so as I'd mentioned, a majority of them are around uh, new positions, but at the top you'll see some new things that we incorporated around IT needs. And this was a big effort for the community and the board this year was to make sure that our our IT infrastructure, everything from our internal servers and software systems to how we communicate uh, with residents and the public via a website um, was top notch. And so those come with some additional costs. So the total increase for the final budget that we're looking for, for new things this year um, is just under $200,000. Uh, Kate, the next slide. Uh, and then just to wrap up the operating budget, we did want to highlight um, for everybody, uh, again, not taxing to the full two and a half percent. Looks like we have the six zero in here uh, or the fifth uh, provides for all essential town services, still addresses community goals in the areas of customer service, modernization, succession planning, and a lot of things that the community wants to accomplish this year, fully funds all of our contractual obligations fully funds our uh, other post-employment benefits and the annual required contribution, which is a very important goal for the community. And it fully funds our capital requests, uh, which segues into um, the next slide. So with all this, with the changes that we made, with the new asks, we're able to provide um, uh, an operating budget increase year over year of less than half a million dollars or one point um, two percent in comparison with last year uh, this is lower than what was requested or the year-over-year -year increase that you saw from 
FY19 to FY20. So we're proud to be able to, um, to be able to present this in the current climate that we're in. So the next slide is um, on the capital budget. Uh, this is, was reviewed and uh, endorsed and provided by the capital budget committee. Um, and these are some uh, recurring capital items that were in the town that are in the town's five-year capital improvement plan and they have come up as items that are critical or in, and, and are important um, to maintain the town's infrastructure from buildings as well as uh, as well as vehicles so this is just a summary of um, of what we're looking at in terms of capital requests this year and the amount and for comparison purposes this year's request totals $568,500, and it's a decrease of a little over $150,000 uh, compared to um, compared to last year's capital budget uh, request. On the next slide, uh, this is Article Six, and this is around road reconstruction authorization. Um, this is just a simply this is just a simple authorization to allow the town to accept and spend Chapter 90 funds. Uh, these are funds that uh, each municipality uh, submits a reimbursement for, uh, for road paving and line striping to the state, and the state provides you essentially with grant or aid dollars. Um, so this just allows the town to be able to take advantage of those state funds. And last year, uh, just for an informational point here, um, the town received just under $300,000 um, toward uh, road reconstruction and road paving projects. Um, the next slide is uh, around one-time projects. And this, again, goes back to one of the highlights that we mentioned around the operating budget, taking these one-time projects out of the operating budget, out of the levy, um, and having them as a separate article uh, funded by free cash. Um, so there are, um, uh, before you are the items um, that we have, uh, that have been identified, as important priorities for next year. Uh, the first is around technology. Just, can, I just, can I just add something here? Yes. Um, I think when people see the warrant article is referred to as one-time projects, and we can't change what the warrant article is referring to it as, but really the way we're looking at these is they're non-recurring expenses. So normally they would, you know, they could have gone in the operating budget, but we wanted to be completely transparent to citizens of Dover as to what these one-time non-recurring expenses are and how they relate to what we're trying to do as a town. And so when you look at these, um, these aren't, necessary these are not nice to have projects these are just one-time expenditures that need to occur we don't want them to be part of the tax base moving forward we want to perform these particular projects and then um keep keep up you know keep these improvements in our standard or um, foundation budget, but in an attempt to be completely transparent and into, in an attempt not to artificially inflate the operating budget, we put these with discussions that we had with Warrant and town employees in the special article. So when you think about this, really think about these as one-time or non-recurring type expenses. Excuse me, can I ask a question? I'm a resident of Dover. You need to identify yourself if you don't mind. Okay. My name is Iva Hayes and I live at 18 Meadowbrook Road. Okay. Um, are these actual expenditures are these the amount number two and three i'm particularly interested in so these are our best estimates of what it could potentially cost for these items um if we don't spend all the money it 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 you know just like everything else it goes back 
to free cash. But we okay. have to try and estimate what these could be. Um, you know, item three in particular, and, and you know, I think what might be good is why don't we have Chris go over each of them and then, you know, because I think it will help add color to what we're trying to do with these non-recurring expenses. And, you know, if we haven't sufficiently answered some of your questions, um, you know, feel free to raise your hand again or, you know, if we don't, and if we don't have an answer, we can look into it and, and get back to you at a later date. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you for um, bringing this up. Sorry, Chris. Oh, no, very, um, very important and very helpful. Uh, so the first is around uh, technology related project implementation. Um, as I mentioned uh, earlier, the town has done a significant amount of IT infrastructure evaluation over the past year and has started to implement all those recommendations and best practices which came from professional IT firms. Um, so this runs the gamut of everything about our servers, our data health to protect the town's uh, hardware and software and data from being susceptible to um, cyber crimes, um, to replacing workstations uh, for staff, some of which are over 10 years old and are severely antiquated. Um, so really just replacing a lot of outdated equipment and making sure that we have the most optimal and stable IT environment. And that's critically important as more and more things and more business um, becomes digitized um, and dependent on technology. It's important, critically important for the town to have a robust infrastructure. Um, so this item um, allows us um, to be able to continue to move forward with implementing uh, these particular projects and a lot of the recommendations um, that have come out of our, uh, of our IT work this year. Um, and, you know, just one for one uh, example that I'll give just because it's very visible, for instance, is the new website, right? So we've just rolled out a new modern and up-to-date website, which not only is the speeds are quicker and it's aesthetically pleasing, um, it provides some additional functionality for residents. So, now individuals can more easily find information. They can receive automatic updates, such as when you know, we post presentations like this to particular pages or when a particular board or committee will be meeting. Um, so there's a lot of nice additional functionality that we get. And this is all uh, related to our technology efforts and related to funding uh, like this. The second item is around uh, townhouse space reconfiguration. Uh, and there's a few things here. Um, this was really driven um, with our efforts around um, customer service, as well as the Carroll Community Center building project. So as the Carroll Community Center um, committees um, of years past did evaluations of uh, what a new community center could look like, there was always a question about well, do we need additional space in a new building or a renovated building if the town chooses either path um, to house staff? And um, as we look at the existing townhouse and the existing layout of the townhouse, um, it may be possible that we're able to not only fit our existing staff, but staff 10, 20 years down the road in the townhouse so that we wouldn't need to incur that additional expense of, uh, of new construction over at Carroll Community Center. So this work really helps us um, analyze and understand that question. Um, and it allows us to uh, better utilize um, the townhouse space presently so that it's more customer friendly in that um, people can more easily find customer facing departments when you come into the townhouse to conduct transactions. Um, it improves our public meeting space I always remember uh, uh, one of the last board of selectmen meetings that we had before COVID hit and we had about 30 people who wanted to participate in the meeting, but the public meeting space that we have in the townhouse can only fit about seven people in there. So, you know, people were dragging chairs out into the hallway and which was snaking around to the great hall. So it allows us to really optimize how we use the townhouse, not only for staff, but for the um, 
And Can I ask a question, Ivor Hayes again? Yes. So this has nothing to do with glass partitions for COVID-19 protection. So um, as, the, as, as the state continues to provide guidance based on what they know presently with COVID, um, we are following that guide. So the town has already started to procure um, glass shields for public facing workstations in anticipation of when the building uh, might reopen. But we don't know what work environments could look like three months from now, six months from now, if there are further recommendations or further requirements around HVAC in terms of the air circulation in buildings, the number of staff that we can have in an office space. So this, these funds allow us to also um, be able to react um, based on um, based on the COVID environment that we're currently operating in. Okay, so, thank so, you. So just to um, add some color to this, you know, there are many shared office spaces in there, and we really need to think about how to maintain safe distances for our employees. So as part of this space reconfiguration, we need to look at how we can ensure that um, all town employees can safely work in their spaces. So the, the plexiglass shields, there are certain areas that we know for certain we need to put those up, especially as we figure out how to open the townhouse completely to the public, but we are gonna use some of these funds to help us put together a more comprehensive plan and make those changes um, so that we again have mitigated risk as best as we can to both our employees as well as citizens that need to be in the townhouse doing doing business. Okay, all right, so it's multifunctional. Yeah, yes, and, okay. and that's why we said, you know, it was one project and then as COVID, as this pandemic came into play and we learned more about the pandemic, it highlighted to us um, some additional items that need to be included in this whole space reconfiguration. You know, certainly what our COVID-19 task force is, is learning right now is the need to have um, really good ventilation systems in your buildings. So we definitely need to begin to look at all of that. You know, we have historic buildings that were, haven't been upgraded in many, many, many years. Um, so, you know, these are all things that we need to bring to the forefront and address. Okay, thank you. Chris, if I may, there, um, Article 14, expenses are expenses that are embedded into existing improvement process. I think it's very important to remind people that this process was thoroughly debated that both Dave Haviland, Jim Rapetti, our town council, uh, the board of selectmen, we spent many hours going line by line, word by word, in what to leave in and what to leave out. And it's critically important that you keep that in context of this particular article, this partic these particular topics, and why these particular dollar amounts are in the article because they have been embedded into process improvements, as Madam Chair mentioned, many of which began years ago and are in the middle or stages of, of implementation. Looks like Selectman Spring, it has a comment as well. Yeah, so uh, thanks, Chris. Um, there may be, um, I just want, again, in the interest of full transparency, there may be a discrepancy between what's being presented today as Article 14 
and what the Warren Committee has approved as Article 14. And what some of you may have seen in uh, previous um, warrants, uh, Article presentations. Originally, Article 14, and it may still, it has four, would have four items. These three plus money allocated for organizational assessment. Um, and we debated this particular fourth uh, project pretty extensively at the last fall selection meeting. Um, I think I think I'm going to echo John in the sense that all of these articles, of all of these one-time projects, um, are really continuations of modernization initiatives that uh, we brought to the town in May of 2019. Um, I, I make the um, so the analogy to building a house. Uh, we asked for money in 2019. It was wrapped around improving the um, infrastructure of the town's technology, which was abysmal as it turned out. Um, and so we did several things that we could to sort of build a foundation uh, of a house um, for Dover. Um, these projects are, uh, so that's been done, it's been done successfully. Um, so these projects are continuations of modernization. And if you will, it's sort of framing the house. Uh, so these are not really new projects per se, but it, it continued extensions of the process of building a new or renovating the operational house that Dover has used for too many years. So, so the last one, and again, I, I bring this up because there is a, there may be a discrepancy. Um, the organizational assessment in the uh, tech, uh, piece is deeply related and tied to the technology-related project. So the technology-related projects, as Chris has talked about, um, you know, we've focused on a lot of it with cybersecurity, stabilization, and upgrading a lot of the, the infrastructure, the servers, the, the routers, et cetera, et cetera, all boring stuff, but all stuff absolutely necessary to run a modern office. Um, so organizational assessments are related to IT programs? Yes, organizational and operate. So the goal was operations assessment. And so as we go through that, we, we've taken a hard look at the organizational side, which is how, you know, how do we best utilize our people? And there have been plans put in place to sort of um, start to restructure the organization so that we have fewer siloed, single operating people to more, uh, more uh, of a team effort where we can back up people and use resources more effectively. The corollary, on, the corollary on the technology side is, as we look at implementing applications to replace incredibly paper-based systems, one of the things that we need to do is look at um, and actually look at the workflows and, and look at re-engineering that through uh, the use of consultants so that as we automate these departmental applications, we are optimizing the value of the technology. So to do the technology-related project implementations, you need to do the operational assessment and the organizational assessment, they go hand in glove. So at some point in the next couple of days, this will get sorted out. I wanted to make sure that, um, again, again, in the interest of full transparency to the residents of Dover, um, that item is sort of hanging out there and we need to uh, resolve it. Thank you, Robin. And the last item that we have listed on the slide is related to the town's water infrastructure. Um, so the town owns and maintains a water main system uh, underneath the road in the town center. Um, that infrastructure is leased to Colonial Water Company so that they can, uh, who is responsible for using that infrastructure to provide water um, to residents. Um, but the, it's the town's responsibility based on the existing agreement that we, uh, we maintain that infrastructure. And so in years past, there has been, uh, there have been no funds appropriated uh, to either take care of regular maintenance uh, or even emergency maintenance. So for instance, um, this past year, we dealt with two leaks in the town system um, fortunately, they were relatively low dollar cost to replace. Uh, those two were around 
I think thirty, forty thousand dollars, if I recall correctly. But we had to request a reserve fund transfer uh, to be able to cover those costs because uh, there was no money budgeted in years past for this. So uh, this money allows the town to be able to both uh, better assess the existing infrastructure as well as start to develop out a capital maintenance plan so that we can ensure that the system is operating um, appropriately and efficiently. The next slide, Kate, uh, is the next article. Uh, and this is the reserve fund. Uh, so this is a typical article that every community um, has. Um, and this is uh, this fund provides funding for extraordinary unforeseen expenditures like the water main break um, that I had just mentioned. I think it's just important to note for folks that this isn't necessarily a departmental fund that the town can just expend money against. This is a, a, a savings account, so to speak, or an emergency account. Um, and it requires the approval of the Board of Selectmen, the Warrant Committee, and sign off from the Town of Accountant and Town Administrator to be able to access funds in that reserve fund to be able to cover unforeseen costs. So we're seeking, again, $250,000. This is the same as uh, has year after year in the town. And uh, just to clarify um, for individuals, the reserve fund is funded 150,000 of the 250,000 comes from the tax levy and 100,000 of the 250,000 comes from the town's uh, overlay account, which is a fund to um, fund abatements out of the assessor's office. Uh, the next slide, uh, the next article uh, are unpaid bills. Um, and so this authorizes the town to pay any bills from prior years that have gone unpaid. Um, this will typically happen, you'll see one or two usually each year. And this is really where as a town, as towns close out their fiscal year, sometimes vendors will forget to bill the town for service in that particular year. And they'll bill you in the next fiscal year after all our accounts are already closed out. So this hits the books as a liability and an unpaid fund and it goes on the future year town meeting. Um, so this year we have two unpaid bills um, from FY19 that total a little over $4,000, and these are funded by um, free cash. The next article is the last article um, that we have, and this is uh, around uh, free cash to reduce the tax rate. And the town is recommending um, the transfer of uh, $1.5 million in free cash to help reduce the tax rate. Um, this is a pretty standard um, practice in town. Um, this amount is primarily made up of um, the special education aid uh, that, uh, that the school district gets reimbursed for um, and that we get back at the end of the year um, because the town budgets for budgets for it up front. Um, and so that is this article. And so I just wanted to highlight, and this is kind of a wrap up, um, that with this, this article, the free cash to reduce the tax rate, as well as uh, the other financial articles that we've just gone over um, are estimated to result uh, in an effective tax rate of 12.88 uh, per thousand in valuation, uh, which is a four cent increase um, from the current fiscal year's rate of 12.84 per thousand in valuation. And so, you know, to summarize, as we look at everything that we need to do in town and the financial picture, it was important for um, the Board of Selectmen and the Warrant Committee and all the town stakeholders to make sure that we're continuing to provide services, increasing services and programs where we can and is financially viable and smartly, but also minimizing the total impact on the taxpayers, especially during this time. And I think what we presented here today uh, has accomplished that. And that's the end of, uh, of our slides. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Chris. So at this point, we had allocated an hour for this meeting, but we will entertain if there are any questions from the audience that you would like to ask. All right, so there being no meetings, um, no questions, we're gonna 
move ahead and wrap this up. Uh, we will be holding another informational, at least one additional informational session. Uh, this meeting has been recorded and so people can listen to, to it at their leisure. We also will be putting the um, presentation that we shared on the town website. Uh, again, we are here to answer questions. So if there are questions as you listen to the recording or as you look at the presentation, please email them to us and we will read those questions at our next informational session and answer them um, so that citizens as a whole can benefit from the answers to questions that have been asked. And we will also get back to you directly. Um, as the last item of business, I'm going to ask Kate to, to display how to navigate to the um, town meeting page on the website. Just a warning to all citizens. I know some of you may have clicked the website, uh, gone to make a copy and come back. You no longer need to do that before you can even get up from your seat, the website appears. So that is great news. So Kate is going to navigate for you. So you go to the website and I'll let you um, also tell people where to go. Sure. So this is uh, the home page. Um, to find the town meeting uh, page, there's actually a couple ways you can do it. Um, if you go under the government tab, uh, you see town meeting under the board of selectmen. And this brings you to our dedicated town meeting page. Um, here we have an important note on the annual town meeting. Um, we have the public notice posted, um, but we also have resources, including uh, the warrants, um, FY21 budget overview, uh, featuring the COVID final, past town meeting warrants, uh, blue books, capital budget blue book, uh, capital budget presentation. Um, you go down here, it lists all the articles for consideration um, and also gives information on the virtual forums, um, one today and then the one for uh, June 18th. And I did get a suggestion um, from someone mm -hmm that we should uh, post the Zoom link maybe um, maybe in a news alert or something that's a little bit more easier to find um, on, on the website um, for the next meeting. So uh, we'll definitely take that into consideration. Good idea. Robin? Yes? Ford Spaulding, Robin. Um, at this site, it might be a good idea. I know the town report is out. I haven't seen any notice that it's been out or published. I found it yesterday. Um, this That page that uh, Kate just showed would be a good idea to have the town report there. Traditionally, it's Article 1, um, and you're not having the traditional Article 1, but I think it'd be a good idea to have the town report there. It's excellent, and uh, I know there, I heard there are hard copies in the town a hall and you might want to just be a place also to tell people how they could get it if they can get it. Okay, that's a that's a good idea. Yeah, that's definitely a good idea. I can I, I believe it's on the site already, but um we can link it to the town meeting page just to make it more visible. All right, well, thank you everybody. I thank everybody for their time. Um, again, we're here to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, thank you all for joining us. I think this was the most participants we ever had. Appreciate all the staff participating in the meeting so that they could answer any of the hard questions that we couldn't answer. Um, and thank you everybody. And uh, please listen in to the June 11th meeting. Bob, you have something you'd like to add? Yes, yes, just a, just a quick, this is, we should be thinking about this website, the new website that went up Monday. 
as kind of the, the beta phase. Um, there were a lot of work that went into it as a background, but as, as people become familiar with it and, and uh, have comments or suggestions um, for improvements or things they'd like to see, I mean, is, is Kate the point person on this? So, uh, select from so we're um, so we dialogued about this with the boards and committees and with staff. Um, so the the short two second version is we plan to communicate our plan uh, out publicly in the next week or so. Um, but that plan is to let the site now that we've rolled it out sit for the next month or so, so that people yeah. can get accustomed to the new navigation, the new pages, because we don't want to make you know, multiple structural changes to confuse people about the navigation. Um, but during that time, we will accept, you know, feedback um, and other recommendations. Um, those will filter to a, a generic uh, email account that'll store all those. And then we'll review those and look at a kind of phase two uh, improvement implementation phase for the website. So that communication will be going out um, in, the next, uh, in the next week or so to folks. And it will also be prominently displayed on the website, so people, you know, when people go there, they know that that's an option. Right. So, so people familiar with cell phones or OSs, it's just there'll be periodic updates reflecting people's experiences and improvement to the to the site. Yes, that's that's a yes nod from the town administrator. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, Robin. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.